Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Today's the day, James. Baby watch. No, I was just going to say. Megan Markle. Mm. Today's the due dates. Yeah, for surrogate. That's awesome. <laughs> Still don't believe that's real. Still. That's crazy. Widely known. No. It's no. widely known. No, it's not actually. But, uh, that's a, it's a fake belly and they are hmm? waiting for the surrogate. <laughs> surrogate. <laughs> To give birth. There's no way. I don't there think there's a way. You'd be able to fake this at such mm. a an international level. There's no way. If if anyone found out about that, come on. She moved away from the castle. She don't hang out with anybody. It doesn't matter. She shows up camera ready. There's gonna be a doctor who performs that birth. That would say something. Yeah. You can't you can't get know. away with shit like that in today's day and age. You mm. can't. Okay. You're still convinced that it's a surrogate. I wish to take away any joy that she may have from this. <laughs> and that's the point of it. I wish to take it all away. Why? She's having a baby. I hate her so much. Well, she's having a baby, Jesse. Maybe. Someone's having a baby, yeah, and she will be taking care of the baby and raising it gender fluid, and someone will have had the baby. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's widely known. I'm not, you know, I'm not alone on nope, this. you're the only one I've heard it from. I'm not alone on, on this. Yeah, you are. Many people. You are believe this is true no so. no one except and for congratulations you. to them there's no shame by the way in doing that i look my god there isn't but megan markle is having baby, a baby someone else is carrying it y'all no, no. y'all <laughs> so again congratulations to them however it happened it's all. It's always a miracle, right? This is a real it's baby. Always, a, it is a real baby, and it is out their baby of her vagina, of no. Meghan Markle's vagina. Uh, debatable, and you can believe whatever you want, and I can believe whatever I want. Sure, and that is America. There's no way in today's world you can get away with that. You can't. You can't. Okay. You can't do it. I think Kim okay. Kardashian would have faked it if she could have. Then she can't get away with it. Uh, you want to tell me that the, the Beyonce did the princess? How Beyonce got oh, away? Oh come it? on, she had that kid. Listen, which one? The we, you saw the doctor. You saw the doctor videos, the twins and all that stuff. The twins, yeah, the twins, and that's why she was so out there with the twins. Hey, and showing the belly and the big, you know, no. picture the uh, um. Photo shoot of her looking like the queen of the world, Mother Earth. She's the only one to ever give birth. Remember that? Photo yeah, yeah, shoot? yeah, yeah. Um, so she was so adamant about doing that for the second one because she uh, faked the first one. Um, I'm gonna and go got with, caught. With, and with, got caught. with no on all of this. Got caught. This is That's this is alleged, a lot like the, the faking the moon landing thing. Like I can't, I can't prescribe to this. Okay. Or alien. Prescribe, or subscribe, either way. I, I can't I can't be a scribe and write about it. I can't do any of, of what you're saying right now. Again, you don't have to. You're alone in this opinion. Um however, the two of us are alone in the world, I feel like, after the Game of Thrones. Man. Yeah, we're the only ones. You and I are the only we're ones the who only. do not watch the show. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can't talk to anybody. Yeah. I feel like every joke that is being texted to me from friends is regarding a Game of Thrones character. And they're oh. like, Winky, you get it, right? And I'm like, no. Yeah, I would be like, I know. I, know. I, I feel I weird know. texting my friends back with mm-hmm. that. Like, I, I throw out an emoji, you know, because I don't, I don't know what they're talking just about. Just mind blown. You know what's a good one is a mind blown emoji. You know that one? Yeah. Just send that. <laughs> and it will really just, it'll be like, I know. <laughs> my mind is blown as well. 
I'm excited for it to be over with so I don't feel dumb for not watching it. Yeah. I am. It's weird to be to to have the whole world be in on in, in on, on something, something that you don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. No. Strange, right? Uh, yeah. Brings me back to childhood for sure. <laughs> and I don't like it. So I'll watch it. What part about your childhood exactly? Being left out. Yeah. Were you? No. You were on the outside looking in? Were you standing no. outside the fire? Mm-mm. I was always super cool and everyone liked me, but uh, I could see how it would feel. Oh, okay. Yeah. You were able to step outside yourself and examine yourself? Yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. I was always super cool and everyone liked me. So. Okay. So you were never alone. I want to... Reiterate that. No. Okay. No. Never an outsider. Gotcha. Gotcha. Never left out. <laughs> Never sad. You know, no, no teen angst. Nothing. Just a super cool, awesome person from beginning to now. Right. So like when Nirvana came out, you were mm-hmm. like, yeah, he's speaking about me instead. You were like, yeah. It's good songwriting. Yeah. I was like, I get it. Yeah. You know, That's like a good I songwriter. He's a good songwriter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm making sure that that's, uh, I'm on that the same unplugged. page as you. Oh, my gosh. Greatest thing ever. Greatest thing ever. And it really, as soon as you hear that. Um, Greatest MTV Unplugged yeah, ever. Yeah, but ever. As, soon as, you, as soon as you hear one of those songs, My Girl, you know? Yeah. It really just floods back all of that because I was, you know, I wasn't always cool or, we, or, or awesome or had a bunch of friends or popular. I wasn't always. I was sometimes, but. We heard it in a movie last night. Yeah. Man. And it's one of those things where you're like, oh, shit, I've been listening oh, to that in forever. It just and then as soon as you hear back. it, yeah. Um, especially. Did you watch that live when it came out? Yeah. I did too, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just on repeat on my cd player disc man you know brooding angsty in my room just yeah the weird thing about that whole performance because we watched we watched some documentary where they were talking about the the making of it you know and what had happened Uh because i I guess he had od'd in like italy or something and then came back a couple months later and did that show yeah the weirdest part about it for me was he looked great and that's image of him in my mind is is my lasting image of Kurt Cobain Mm -hmm. I don't I don't picture him as like the drugged out like I don't remember those faces as much but I remember his face and the way he looked and that sweater in the MTV Unplugged and that's my lasting memory of him because it was such a great all-time performance and then I think he died shortly after that right I think so yeah but man that was the best mm. MTV it really brings it all of back. all time. That was the best. Man, that was great. And what brought it up was we wa- I watched mid nineties last yeah. night. The, the Jonah Hill movie. The Jonah Hill movie. Wrote and directed. It's great. Really impressed. I know we don't. We're not. He's not a friend of the show. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> And I, I'm able I know. To separate. I don't know if it pisses you off for me to say it. It does that not. It, it really was. It was an amazing first go. It does not. Like, look, I'm able to separate. And I know he had a lot of help. I know. It, the ar- you know. No, no, no. I'm, I'm able to separate the artist from, from the person or what it was like working with somebody and still admire their work. Because there's other people that I have not enjoyed working with over time that have been in some other cooler shit where I was like, oh, all right, cool. Like, that, that movie was great. Right. Uh, he did a great job all the way around. He did a great job. He did an awesome job just capturing that time. In your life, uh, right before things get real, right before you have to grow up a little bit, right? What age was that for you? Um, probably fifteen. Okay. Fifteen. And what? What 14, did? 15. What did you realize, and why was it so heavy? Let me ask you that. Well, you get into sixteen, you start driving. So the things exactly what happened in the movie, the things that you were doing, the carefree. I mean. When you're on your bike riding around or there's no real um, responsibility or consequence. Right. That moment right before. Because when you get a car, it is responsibility. It's consequence. You can't like, you have to be like the sober one or you get a DUI or whatever it is. Sure. Like, um, So that moment, again, 13, 14, 15, where you feel grown up. 
like you're you can kind of be on your own a little bit and you're like feeling yourself and then something will happen once you get a car once you're 16 once whatever that will bring bring that down a little bit to reality responsibility yeah i i think uh, insurance i think fucking, mine yeah you know. of course M- mine was eighth grade i remember ha- halloween in particular of eighth grade where i as a kid i had always liked to put like latex and like crazy makeup on and, and do these like elaborate halloween like bloody faces costumes murder type things you know mm-hmm. and i went all out obviously it led to whatever you know i've done in this life mm-hmm. um because i mean i would really get the latex where you had to you had to boil it and then you know put it in, in hot water and then apply it while it was hot and then wait for it to dry for like a half hour and it was just realistic and yeah Great. movie quality yeah uh, well f- for a kid yeah 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 as close as i could get to it and i remember going uh trick-or-treating in my neighborhood because that's kind of the last year where it's like you're eighth grade yeah and that's pushing it it, it is yeah it, it is pushing it and i remember it pushing it and i remember being interested in girls more than halloween and mm-hmm. i remember a girl coming up to me that i liked and said you look gross with all of that that shit on your face and I was like, oh, man, is this not cool anymore? I know. But I was like, is this, not, is this not cool anymore? Is this not the thing? And then like other friends of mine were in kind of more grown-up costumes where they were getting ready for to hang out with girls later and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, man, this is kind of the end of it. Mm-hmm. And then I remember uh, that awkward time in ninth grade where I had the late birthday. Mm-hmm. Which one of our sons has the late birthday? Yeah, where everybody had their car but me, right. and I couldn't. I was stuck on relying them to come and pick me up and do things with and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And like, there was an awkward phase for about a year and a half there, ninth grade, where it was just like, all right, cool, because all the ninth grade girls went for all the older dudes. Sure. So it was just us who were left alone. None of us could drive. Right. And you're in this in between year of like, oh, yeah, shit. Um. But that movie. But if you really think back on that time, and if you did have some friends or whatever before you did drive, that is that sweet spot moment. Yeah. That you should not take for granted of like, you don't have to drive. You don't have to be in charge of anything. Like, the most you will have to do is get home by a certain time. And then if you have lax parents, you don't even have to do that. It's so you're in yeah. this like I'm old enough, but I'm not old enough. Like, uh, you know, I'm old enough to feel like I can take care of myself, but I'm not old enough to have to. And that moment was your childhood like in the movie because you're from uh, obviously California. W- yeah. Were people drinking forties and shit like yeah. that? So like everything, the smoking cigarettes, like way too young. Really. Um drinking 40s hanging out at somebody's house we always had somebody's house that for some reason their parents weren't home yeah where we could party or they were and they were cool or her ghetto or whatever i'm not sure but we always had houses like that seemed nice um pools things like this but we were getting trashed right and hanging out gotcha um so that was exactly it and like going to watch people skate at a certain point i was like fuck this but yeah that's the thing you just go watch people skate watch people surf drink on the beach drink in a park drink at someone's house yeah 40s always old english mickeys that's hilarious i remember let's see so for seventh grade we we moved to florida okay and I, i spent one year in florida in clearwater florida and that upbringing from Georgia for that one year was 100% polar opposite. And it felt like kids, you know, movie kids where you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ. People were fucking in seventh grade where I was like, I am not used to this drinking, smoking, all that other stuff. Like, I mean, there was crazy fights and you name it across the board. Oh, yeah. And I was at a school where, where there was busing. So they would bus in kids oh, yeah. from the inner city to you know the the white suburbs and you had to magically mix and it was like these kids had to get up like two hours earlier ride a bus an hour and a half to 
our school. They were already pissed off about oh, it. Oh, totally. It, it was they a didn't want to do it. Nightmare yeah. all the way around. Um, fights every day. I, the first, I think the second day I was there, I got I get, I get a fight and I get suspended for two weeks. Knock this kid out. I'm sure your mom was oh, super excited devastated. about that. Yeah, yeah devastated. Yeah. But she, she didn't know what I was going through mm-hmm. at school where, where it literally was a goddamn War free zone, for all. Yeah. yeah. What, um, what the grade only, was the that? only thing that saved me, that was seventh. And the only thing that saved me mm-hmm. was c- cause it was kind of like, uh, kind of like that Jonah Hill movie where mm-hmm. like, you know, they skateboarding brought them together. The only thing that saved me in Florida skateboarding really, really wasn't that big at that school was basketball. Mm-hmm. So all of those kids from the inner city, like I was great at basketball. And so I played with them every day after school. And after that, everybody was kind of like, all right, n- nobody fuck with Ross cause we need him on the team. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing where if you learn how to do something that can bring you into a community, smart. Yeah, but it was, you know, that was a skill I already had. And it was, I just happened to move to a place where they took basketball pretty seriously. But uh, otherwise, forget it. Uh, It would have been miserable. Right. Absolutely miserable. Sports saved me there. I mean, it was like, it was as bad as like people were going around like uh, pricking each other with like needles and thumbtacks and all that shit. Like. Yeah, I mean, it was, shit was wild down there. It was one of those schools that was all outdoors. Did you have an all outdoor school? Yeah, for um, seventh and eighth grade, yeah. Which to me, because I was coming from all indoor schools, and I know this, this sounds weird, but because it was an all outdoor school and it was in Florida, it almost felt like you should be at the beach every day. So mm-hmm. it kind of added to this attitude of like, man, I don't want to go to class. I want to ditch. I want to do something other than this. Because Isn't every that- period... Bell would go off, and then you'd be outside in the sunshine with palm trees all around your school, and you're like, oh, I definitely don't want to be locked inside a classroom here. Isn't that funny? That is probably why, you know, California breeds these sort of unproductive people. Yeah. Because it is so nice out all the time that you don't want to... You don't want to be inside. You want to be in school. It's just like kind of human nature, right? Like you just... I mean, you can't look outside the window at the gorgeous beach and the whatever yeah. and be sitting in there doing work. Some people can, but it's super hard. Especially for kids where it's just like, all right, great, man. I don't want to do this. I think you have to be in an air conditioned high school anywhere in America to get shit done. Otherwise, you know, every single period I was leaving, I was like, yeah, this is amazing outside. Like, can yeah. I just go home? Yeah. But yeah, sports saved me. That that movie was very similar to what I felt that upbringing was. And then the weird part is we moved back in, at the end of seventh grade in eighth and then to the same place in Georgia again. And mm-hmm. um, I'd kind of fallen out of my friend group and then fell back into them. Uh, and they were not as advanced as what I was seeing in the seventh grade shit. So I was just like, there was a period where I was kind of bored where I was like, oh man, you guys aren't. Right. Nobody's fucking here? Yeah. That's okay. Strange. Yeah. Strange. But he, he captured that movie really, really well. And um, I'm surprised it wasn't nominated for more like Independent Spirit Awards and all that other stuff. I know. I mean, just from, I mean, artistic direction to I mean, nothing took me out of it. No. The acting, the improv like M- Music makes a big difference. And look, he had Trent Reznor as a, you know, doing the score and all that stuff. So. It does, but like the look of it, the acting, great film, the heart of it. Yeah, you can't really pay for that, right? Like yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to get all of that exactly right. And again, he did have a lot of help um, to have your first directorial debut be with that much help. Sure, cinematographer wise, everything. Good casting director too. Yeah. Um, I, lo- I always look at the end of it because chances are I usually know him. And it was Allison Jones and she did uh, Parks and Rec in the office. And so she's used to putting great casts together like that. That are unknown. Yes. Yeah. And, and um, that's, a, that's a huge skill. Because typically in casting, what happens is, you know, to get the, the movie either financed or sold around the world, you've got to have a shit ton of names in it. So then... You're kind of left over with a handful of roles that you can't afford to pay big actors for. Mm-hmm. So then you go for unknowns. Right. When you're casting all leads that are unknowns like that, it's a tough job. Yeah. Tough gig. Because you got to be, especially kids, you got to be seeing a ton of kids from all over the... Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sad day in um, 
entertainment entertainment yeah we uh ironically like i'll i'll we've only done this once but we'll give the revolutionary figure of the day kind of up front here uh we're gonna give it to uh john singleton who passed away the director um man we just talked about the the, the black cat oh you think you don't i know from boys in the hood I know. john singleton wrote and directed we gave him boys in the hood the revolutionary figure last show i think well we gave the cop yeah who died yeah. and um now we're giving it to john singleton who who wrote and directed this i mean if you don't know john singleton's work he directed boys in the hood and uh, poetic justice i mean the list goes on and on he was an iconic black filmmaker i mean geez probably him and spike lee yeah. We're the ones doing Boys in the Hood, again, to reiterate what I said on the last show, was one of my all-time favorite films. And at the time, it was so groundbreaking. No one had ever done anything like it. And it's pretty close to a masterpiece. I mean, they nailed it. Um, they nailed it. But I saw a, a post from Michael Rappaport. Yeah. He was the first one I saw this morning, and I was like, oh, shit. And he posted a picture of uh, him himself as Remy. From Higher Learning. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, dude, he did Higher Learning. Higher Learning was an awesome movie. Um, he was one of those dudes, man, who just uh, always, in Hollywood, he just kind of always stood for what he believed in and did that. That's how he kind of based his projects on, I don't, I, I don't remember him ever bowing down to the man for a, for a project. So No, or being too um, out there, yeah. press-wise. No, yeah, so he was yeah, definitely yeah. a behind the camera type of guy, yeah. and just sort of let everything else shine. Like you hear his name, you know his face, but you don't like see him everywhere out all the time. Spike no. Lee style. Spike you know? Lee is everywhere. So you he's fifty one. Yeah, fifty one years old, which is young. It's stroke. another stroke. What is that? What what causes that? It's, it's such a young age. Because what was Luke, Luke Perry was fifty two. Yeah. Oh, is it stress? Stress. I well, got about an hour left on this show. Then, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Any one of these, I could go down. So at least yeah. they're all bookmarked. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Subscribe yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. You can see me die li- live on the show. If oh. I if I do die live on the show, will leave you finish it, it? Yeah, leave it in. Obviously, will you finish it out? Yeah, okay. obviously. Cool. Because I'll know if you're like you know, down for the count or if there is something that can be done. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you'll be able to determine it real quick and be like, all right, cool, guys. Yeah. Leave it in a two-shot, too, please. Yeah. Because I want you and then my, my yeah, dead so body slumped gonna be, over here. Do you want to do it really quick so you're going to be like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be... You'll be like this, and then I will just finish the show. Hey. Hey, guys. <coughs> and then we both die. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Did you try to do an impression of me and yeah. then you, you caught yourself? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. It happened. There right? It is. There it is. How is that? Good? It's really good, I think. I don't even know if you need me. You can just do that. Oh. It's split screen. Many people feel the same way. A lot of people. A lot of people feel the same way that I don't need you. Any, you know, for the, this yeah, show. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I'm, pr- I'm pretty much just your dummy that you've propped up at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're my sidekick. And yeah. I think everyone sort of knows that at this point. You could, tw- you could do your own twin show. You know my, you know my hatred of... Uh, people playing themselves in movies. Have we ever talked about this? Doing the twins. You thing, hate like twins in real life, and it yeah. and it creeps you out. And especially I don't hate them. identical twins it holding hands. Me. Yep, holding hands, wearing suits. A reoccurring nightmare is just walking down the hallway and having a light off, and then when, as soon as I turn the light off, like if I'm walking to the kids' room to give a bottle or something, and I have to turn the light on always from darkness to light the reoccurring dream and thought that I have is when the light comes on, there's going to be twins holding hands. And that's in the hallway as the light turns on. And then if I turn it off, they're gone kind of thing. Okay. No, not twins. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Twins. <laughs> the fucking twins. Yeah. 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 No knives or guns or are they, are they holding any weapons? Oh no, they're sweet. Oh, they're, they're really nice. Oh, children. They're really nice children, but okay. creepy as Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like I they're guess saying it. hi. They're saying hi, but they're holding hands, matching clothes. 
Are they saying it in unison? Mm-hmm. Hi. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. They're fucking twins. Yeah, yeah. Twins. Twins. I used to do that to my brother. We would drive in these back roads in Ojai. And I would turn the headlights off for a second. Uh-huh. Like if I, because I know the road so well. So I would turn it off and be like, twins! <laughs> turn them back on. Twins! <laughs> you fucking twins! And if you really look, if you're driving down a road, turn off the headlights for a second. You can see twins. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody knows that. You will that. see twins. If you want to see twins, you'll see twins. Common do you know knowledge. what I mean? Common knowledge. Mine's the opposite. So I hate twins and I hate the same. I, I hate when one actor plays twins in the same movie. So Army Can't Hammer, Lindsay Lohan. In, in my humble opinion, only one person has been able to do it great. And that, that ironically, it was Army Hammer. And we hate, we dislike Army Hammer. That is the only one where I thought for a second. That it was twins. But I did too. They, they found super hot, amazing twins yeah, to yeah. play these fucking guys. That's it. I did think it. And then I was like, oh, I'm dumb. The rest of them hate it. Yep. Hate it's it. It's never, it's always like one has an accent or they try and do like a weird characteristic yeah. to. One, so my, one of my favorite actors it. is Tom Hardy. Sure. Right. He just did one a couple of years ago where, you know, he was a gangster, like two gangsters. Uh, and I just, I can't, I can't stand it. It's the like. Yep. And they're looking at each they're other. They're looking at each other. And they each have like a different their... accent or a thing to throw, you know. So what you're saying is when you die, if you die, I do my side. Yep. Record that and yeah. then do the twins thing. Dye your hair or something. Yeah, exactly. I'll just put on an accent. Exactly. And talk to yourself. One will be, because that, <laughs> that's apparently how Lindsay Lohan has gotten anything that she's gotten. Did, did you see, for what is it? Freaky Friday? No, what's the one? The Parent Trap. Have you seen ah, her yeah, in yeah, Parent yeah, yeah. Trap? My yeah. gosh, when she did Parent Trap, we just thought, oh, yeah. we've got something here. <laughs> you have something. Yeah. You do have something on your hands. Yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, James Franco does it in a show called The Deuce. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, I, I don't even like that show. I can't watch any That's of that. That's probably part of it. If you're it playing is. fucking twins, like, what's the budget? We don't have another. I know. We don't have a set of twins out there. There's a million sets of twins. Acting twins talk about, you know, transgenders having to play transgender and black people having to do whatever. Handicapped people having to play handicap. Yeah. We can't have twins playing twins. Is that the next crusade? Get those brothers. Get those brothers from Empire who, uh, who staged the attack on, on Jesse Small. Aren't they, aren't they brothers or twins or something like that? They're brothers. They're not twins, but they're brothers. And they, no, I don't even know if they're brothers. I think they are. They are brothers. Okay. Well, they're not twins for sure. Okay. <laughs> got they it, definitely got don't it, got look it, got a lot alike. Yeah. 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 Twins. Twins. They're fucking twins. Yeah. We got to, we got to kill the twin thing all the way around. What? Again, I don't want to see it in movies and TV shows. Oh, we have to kill the twin thing. All yeah, way or cast real twins. It's that I can't. I can't watch you do the same thing to each other. And I know what you're saying. Hey, Ross, we're all actors, right? Mm-hmm. I, I just that that's one that will never fool me. Where it's just like, oh, I've never been surprised, right? Except for the Winklevi. That's God. it. He really did. He and he's riding off that too because he's not that great of an actor, <laughs> right? Right. But he's riding off that fact that people are like. Fucking Army Hammer. Yeah. In the uh, the Facebook vehicle. Yeah. You ever watch things now, knowing how politically sensitive everybody is about everything, and wonder how it's even getting made right now? We were watching that doctor show the other night with Freddie Highmore, where he was playing the autistic guy. Yeah. Um, and I was like, man, is he? Is he real? Is that real? Is he, is he really autistic? Or right? That's what do the we character. Do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I thought he was. He, you know. Yeah. He does a good job. I don't know. Surprised people haven't raged against that. And said what? Same thing as they're saying everybody else. Remember that Brian Cranston thing of like, why couldn't you get somebody in a wheelchair oh, to play yeah. that part? Like, <clears throat> why couldn't you get somebody with real autism who plays that part? Yeah, that'll probably be the next one. I would imagine. There's right? two shows now. Uh, atypical and that one where a n- someone not on the spectrum is playing someone on the spectrum 
Um, I remember reading. There's a new show on on Netflix called Special, where there is no straight white men that they brag about. Okay. Uh, cast in the in the show, the main character is a gay disabled person in real life. Okay. So they're playing themselves. Okay. So they got a real gay disabled person to play a gay disabled person. Oh, all right. And um, proudly saying in their uh, in their trailer that they did not hire any straight white men. Ah, there we go. I was worried about that. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of the only thing that I've ever weird, read like, for feels very, very strange, very aggressive. The only thing that I've ever read for where they were like, hey, we're not doing this was uh, I read for a movie called The Ringer audition for a movie called The Ringer. It was the Fairley brothers, Johnny Knoxville. And it was he was faking his way into the Special Olympics. Yeah. And so every the entire cast was had some form of retardation. Mm-hmm. And so initially they had called us all in and, you know, we had to act, you know, obviously pretend to be retarded and all that stuff. Yeah. And it, it, it was, it was a wild process. And at the end of it, I remember walking out and I was like, man, I wonder what they're going to do with this. Um, because there were so many, right. so many characters that required it, you know, for this movie to work. Uh, the, the Fairley brothers, the, I think at the, the last moment, they switched it all out and they actually got people who were really actually, you know, had some form of retardation. Yeah. 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 But it was, they were auditioning people first. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so there was pages Definitely. of dialogue and stuff. And, uh, you know, we had to go, like, I remember Tropic Thunder came out like a few years after. And I, because I, st- I, I have used a coach for all of these years. Her name is Crystal Carson. She's amazing. I think she's in Atlanta now, by the way. Um, but she was helping me with that. And she was, you know, before, again, before Tropic Thunder came out, she was like, look, you can't go full. Yeah. Can't go full retardedness. No. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, it's got to be a lighter version of it to make it believable. And just a little bit stuff. slower. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, some yeah, yeah. Kind of like, yeah. Mild. And uh, that I was just like, Ugh. Spectrum. Yeah. In today's. Rain Man. I was thinking about this because when we were watching that, that Freddie Highmore thing whatever doctor he is on that show Mm -hmm. if word even leaked out about an audition like that today Mm -hmm. there would be just instant rage yeah 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 it's weird they haven't touched that one yet like i said atypical in that show yeah it's weird that they haven't touched that well it's i want to say this atypical and the doctor show were shot you know what three years ago Four years ago, probably. A typical second season. Was, second season, but they, yeah. they, they take a long gap between oh, okay. uh, breaks. And you, you still have to shoot a pilot to see if it's going to get picked up. Mm-hmm. So that whole process is, is a while. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Right. Who knows if, if that was right before. I, I, I'm going to guess both of those shows were right before all this shit happened. Maybe that community is a lot more accepting of that because it does make them... In both shows, it makes them, you know, it takes away the stigma, but it does. There it, it is. The doctor guy is super smart and helps people in every show. And then the atypical kid, you, you know, you realize how able he is to do normal life. Yeah. And just seeing him like be a normal person, even though he is on the spectrum and has to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because autism is such a scary thing right now for people and has been for many years that, you know, hope, I guess that community is not giving them shit because they're really portraying them in such a great light. I don't know. I, look, I, I think it's, it's always possible for somebody to do that, you know, um, actors and all that other stuff. Yeah, that was, that was the point before people started being like, no, only... Uh, you know, per- someone in a wheelchair needs to play that. Only a transgender can play this. Like, that took away from all those stories. But thankfully, this community um, is okay with it. Yeah. So far, we'll see. So far, we. I mean, you're starting it now. We you're will starting see. the movement. I'm not starting. Oh yeah, movement. you're gonna start the whole. No, no, no. I'm, 
there will be zero movements that I start probably in yeah, my life. Yeah, me neither. And like none. Yeah. No movements whatsoever. Mm-mm. Movement of my arms and legs, and that's about it. Sure. That's that's all I'm going to encourage people to do is move your arms and legs. How about these guys in the cave? Which ones? Here's what the movement I'm going to start. <laughs> do you hear about these five guys that went to the cave? No. Yeah. So uh, I've seen it on a couple news outlets now, but these five guys went into this cave that's seven miles long and it looks, I mean, insane. Like you have to grapple down. It's There's water in it. Like it's a hardcore cave. Okay. In West Virginia or something like this. These five guys went, no provisions, you know, no food, no nothing. Why would you? You're just having a nice cave dive. Just a nice seven mile cave dive with friends. Yeah. Uh, Five friends. So one guy got out and called 911 or whatever. And they had to do this big rescue effort. Mm. The five guys in the cave. What are you doing? How long were you, how long were they there for? How long were I think they, they wanted to be in there longer for the book deal. And that's what I was like <laughs> thinking, like, what are you doing? The time that you went into the cave with literally no provisions, no spot person at the top, n- nothing. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Hypothermia. I mean, they're all like about to die. So one guy can get out. One guy to call. 911 and have people come save them. Yeah. Well, look, you, you, it always takes one guy. Right. So. But the other guys felt that they were skilled enough to go into this crazy cave, but didn't, I, I don't know. Didn't bring food, didn't bring anything else. Didn't bring anything, weren't able to get out. No, ca- no storm came, no nothing, nothing. Yeah. Just... You went to the cave, you couldn't get back out of the cave. I wonder if you do start thinking about book deals and all that other stuff when you, when you get to that moment. Why do you go? Why do you go? I don't know. Why do you go? I, Unless you're insanely skilled. It's like the guy that climbs on the side of the mountain, right? Yeah. I, I, well, that guy's still alive, by the way. He's I don't know alive how. alive, and I don't know how, but I, I, I mean, he's so skilled. If something happened to him, it would be like, yeah. You know, like he, he knew what he was getting into. He was totally prepared. I don't just... even like talking about that guy who, because they won an Oscar for best movie. I don't, I don't even want to talk about that guy because it makes my palms sweat. Right. Watching him. And, and they did a, I, I believe they showed that movie on Discovery Channel. And everybody was just like, dude, I, I felt like I was going to throw up and pass out because this guy just is scaling these mountains without nothing on, mm-hmm. just rock climbing without mm-hmm. nothing on. It always trips me out why that's something you want to do. Like you wake up and say, I want to do. I read this article too this morning about a guy who, uh, uh, these people work on like oil rigs and they have to deep dive mm-hmm. down and look at shit or fix shit underwater. I mean, they get paid a crazy amount of money for right. this, right? But they go down for hours at the bottom of the ocean where it's just pitch black. And there, there will be like five to seven of them that, that do it and they can't even see each other. That's how dark it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're using these devices that'll tell you like where the cables are and the lines and all that other shit. It's so dangerous that when they come up, they have to go in one of those deprivation chambers for mm-hmm. seven hours and no one else can be in there. So they're by themselves during this whole process. I can't imagine wanting to do that job. This, this one guy, his cable snapped mm-hmm. and, uh, they, I guess like everybody from the ship was panicking because once your cable snaps, that's it. You're so far down. Oh, yeah. And they give you like seven mer- uh, minutes of emergency air, mm-hmm. and then that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't, he, he, you know, he was so far down. When, when that cable snapped, he hit the bottom of the ocean. Oof. And he goes, man, I just remember looking up. He lived? He lived. He lived without air for over 20 minutes. Isn't that wild? But how did he get back up? I, I, didn't, I didn't get to the part of right, like how right. it got up. Like, Crazy. Because then you worry about the bends and all that shit. All but of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand that. And but this that was is over a job. in like Scotland. So here's what I understand about that. You're getting paid. You are. So what I don't understand. Well, the rock climbers are getting you, paid. Yes. Yeah. But what I don't understand. The cave guys. Is the cave guys. Yeah. The cave kids. <laughs> 
What did I say every time? Every time that story kept coming. What are you doing in the cave? Yeah. What are you doing in the cave? <laughs> Would you? Why'd you go in the cave? And no one asks. Like, it's just like, oh, we made a rescue. And no one's like. Well, the kids got stuck there because of that. Why'd you go into was, the cave? It was a flood or something. They didn't have a choice what? but to go into the cave, Chaves. There's a movie coming out about these kids, okay? They went to the cave because it's a ritual to go to the end of this cave and touch it, touch the end, and come back once they've like done with some soccer thing, okay? <laughs> so it was this like tradition, and it was raining. I mean, storm, whatever. Yeah. What are you doing in the cave? What are you doing in the cave? What are you doing in the cave? <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. Hey, buddies. 30, age 35 to 59, these guys, five guys. Yeah. 39 to 59, huh? Mm-hmm. That's the age range of the guys. 59 is a little too old to be diving into a cave, I feel. Yeah, if you're not skilled enough to get back out. No. They were 100 feet in. 100 feet. 100 feet, that's all, that's all they got to. Yeah. That's all they got to of the seven-mile cave. Wow. 100 feet. That's crazy. Gosh, and then we're just done. Yeah. We're done. What happened that it was like, we're done? 100 feet, we're done. We can't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either, but here's the thing. No one's going to ask, what the fuck were you doing in the cave? No one's going to ask that. Yeah. It's just going to be like, yep, <laughs> normal life. Everyone's got the things that they like to do, and... We're not going to jump. Weekend warriors. They were weekend warriors. Why not? You know? Maybe, the, maybe the pickup game was, was, you know, postponed. They loved it. Yeah. They saw a cave diving thing somewhere and they thought we could do it. Why not? No training, no equipment, not even a little cereal bar did they bring. Not even a Luna. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> I don't know if you need training Maybe to, they to dive wanted into the a cave. book deal and 100 feet in, they're like, dude, we can't do we this. We can't like, do this. You yeah. have to get, bro, bro, you need to get up there and have someone come. I can't do this book deal thing. Yeah. I know we were supposed to all stay in here and get hypothermia and like have the divers come get us. I can't do it. West Virginia. It would be amazing if that shook out like that. Ugh. And they found that it was all for a book deal. I would. I love it. Ah, that'd be great. It'd be great. Um, I want to talk about something we saw in 60 Minutes. With the uh, creepy Russia thing. Okay. And now? Yeah. Uh, how Norway is kind of like the last or the first line of defense where it's just like, yeah. hey, they're there. But then they had the guy, you know, the, the, their captain or whatever, their colonel on the news saying, well, yeah, we're not really prepared for any of this and we can't match their military. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're like, great. What are you going to do? And they were like, well, we're going to call America. You know, they put like an American ship there. Yeah. And we were kind of joking about it when we saw it, where it was just like, oh boy, beautiful. Right. And they had a like a, a cute looking girl who was there, the guard. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, hey, yeah. who's here with you? And it's like, oh, it's like four of us. And I'm like, man, you probably shouldn't be giving up all of these secrets. Yeah, they were really just showing all of the coordinates and computer things. Yeah. And they were like, okay, well, now you know. Strange. And uh, when we saw it, I was like, yeah, well... I understand why we're there and everything that's going on. And they're, they're on the lookout in case shit happens. Right. Right. Well, today something happened. Mm. They found a beluga whale with a Russian harness strapped to its back that was swimming through the waters. And they've got a, they've got a picture of it. Right. And on Drinking Bros, we had Marcus Littrell on. Right. And he was talking about the dolphins and the dolphin project and all that other stuff. With the lasers, yeah, laser dolphins. Totally. And he would not elaborate on what is what they're using the dolphins for, or what's going on with these dolphins. Nobody else would either, uh, which is fine. I didn't press it. Sure. Um, but it, he said he goes, yeah, you know, I like a kind of off offhanded remark on the show. He was like, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, look what they're doing those fucking whales in, in Russia, and I was like. Huh? Did you kind of think like he was being crazy? No. I, you're just like, really? When you're on a level like that, like I remember with him and uh, with, with uh, Rob O'Neill, the guy who killed Bin Laden, whenever they tell me shit about what's going on, like government wise or whatever. It's like you obviously know more than we do. Way, way more than we do. Right? right. And the way that they say it, which is kind of just off the cuff, it's not like 
you're sitting someone down to tell a story where it's just like, all right, right now here's this thing. And you're like, I don't believe this. Right. Um, but the, the way that they talk about things, which is so like, yeah, no, here's this, here's the answer for that. And you're like, Oh shit. Is it, should I be? And then no. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, cause most of a, a lot of the things they'll tell you what it is. So if you ask about aliens or area 51 or wh- whatever it is, they'll be like, eh, here's what it really is. Right. Um, and it's pretty close to what you think. The whale thing, I, I still don't understand the dolphin thing. Well, if you're going to strap a laser or a harness or something. It'd be well, the fact that they're, they're trained and they're smart enough to yeah. know to come back and do all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah. And the fact that you're doing it with whales now. Um, next level. Russia's on another level, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Man. Be afraid. <laughs> be afraid of Russia. That's pretty much all I... I wonder, because here's the thing. If, if you're Russia, right, and you're doing this, imagine what China's doing. They've got the smartest people on the planet. Right. They're injecting human DNA into monkeys right now. Yeah, but do they want to, yeah. I think, I think here's what I think, right? I think Russia is the type of country that's like, yeah, we're fucking Russia. Fuck you. Yeah. I think China is like, hey, we're China. Shh. We're China. We're going to just It's have, all a secret. Yeah, we're just going to have the latest technology and crazy shit. And the shit, greatest, right? Way, greatest way before you. It's all got to be coming out of there, you yeah. know? Yeah. So that's my, uh, that's my two cents on this. When this whale popped up, and this is in the AP press, this isn't. That is really like from Ace Ventura. Yeah. But this, I mean, this, it's a beluga whale. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're talking about it here. Um, oh, my gosh. It's most likely that it's Russian Navy. And it's like, what are you doing with these whales, Which man? one's the beluga? <laughs> the big stripy bottom? No, the big white one. It kind of looks like a, uh, uh, kinda looks like a, a gigantic manatee. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but they were saying uh, it wasn't immediately clear what the mammal was being trained for or whether it was supposed to be a part of a a Russian military exercise in that area. But come on, man, what are you strapping things to the back and what was on it? Um, And then, you know, other people are like, look, this is a tame animal that used to get food served to it. And that's why, you know, it's made contact with fishermen. Uh, The question is how can it survive, you know, by finding food by itself? So I think they're trained. Yeah. What other animals? I wouldn't put it past. What other animals? Like dolphins, whales. Mm -hmm. What other animals are they really training? In Russia? Yeah. Because look, they start those gymnasts at like five years old, take them away from their family, lock them up. Oh, yeah. And then they're. uh, Steroids, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You watch that that steroid doc. Yeah. I mean, that starts at, at a young age, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Invictus. Yeah. Right? I think that's the that's the best way. It's the only way you can become a champion. Yeah, it, it, I think the prob- the thing with Russia is the idea of rules. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, doesn't really apply, and they really just want to make superhumans, mm-hmm. super whales. Yeah, oh yeah, right. Yeah, uh, stop it! Stop at nothing. <laughs> They're really just like an evil. You know, super villain. They are. You know, they are. But when you start, when you start getting animals into the mix, mm-hmm. man. Again, it's just this, the kind of country that you don't put anything past. Like, don't think for one second that they're like, should we? No. How can we? Is the only thing that they ask. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look, whatever. How can we do it? And how can we get away with it? They're doing. They're doing it right. The cyber warfare is brilliant. Oh, cyber warfare, the, the Olymp, you know, how knowing were- how dumb Americans are with Facebook posts and shit like that. It's, it's, it was brilliant. brilliant. Like that, that was the only that was my only takeaway from that whole Mueller report um, was the fact that, you know, they were using cyber warfare. And that's like, that's it. That, that there was no collusion. Obviously, there was none of that. All they were doing was just using simple Facebook ads, knowing how dumb we as Americans are and that most people believe what they read and that's it. And you're like, oh man, this is all we have to do. We don't even have to send anybody over there. Let's just buy some Facebook ads, brother. We're good to go. Right. 
we are good. That's the wild thing about Russian. It's, it's, I like the simple things like that where you can really fuck some shit up. Mm-hmm. That's what really, that's what really grinds my gears and tunes me up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that just tunes me up, James. It's the simple things in life. I'm the same way with inventions. Where when everybody, something makes something simple and it blows up and they become rich, I'm like, ah, oh, man, good for you. Yeah. You so, did that. Yeah. Yeah. And like the little Nas X guy who made that country song, you know, the, the, yeah. the black, like that is brilliant so for me. So simple. So simple. And it's just boom. Because I looked on the charts too. After we did that last show, we were talking about Taylor Swift mm-hmm. and her new song. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's number two. Number two. When do you remember a new Taylor Swift song being number two? Wow. You know, it's still number one. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Old Town Road, I want to <laughs> ride till I can't no more. Do you know how pissed off? The only thing I keep thinking about is how pissed off Taylor Swift is right now. You know she is Oh, and again, livid. not nice. No. Bitchy bitch. She's at her house just like... <laughs> On the phone with somebody. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Whose idea was it to fucking come out against it? Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, thank you. Thanks so everybody. so appreciative Thanks. of my fans and everything that's happened. And thank you so much. <laughs> Who the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> That's what oh, I want. Man. I want some be- behind the scenes. I, I just Taylor. like the, that a meme song. And I look, I like the song, so I'm not even shitting on it. Mm-hmm. I just like that a meme song knocks, knocks Taylor Swift off her perch. A what song? A meme song. What's a meme song? It's kind of how it, it became big. I, like I found out the origins of it. People were, kids were using it as memes on, a, on that TikTok app. Oh. Um, so they were having this Old Town Road challenge, and that's kind of how the song blew up. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that other challenge where they were, everybody was standing still? What the fuck was the mm. name of that? The mannequin challenge. That's it. Yeah. Uh, th- that was a song behind that too. Oh. That, that Ray Strumman song. Sing me or, a couple bars. Uh, Power Glide, I believe it was called. Power Glide? Yeah. How does it go? Something like that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was getting into it. <laughs> Ray Sermon or Strumman, I would fuck you pronounce it. Um, I don't buy any of this shit. Yeah. But then remember that one song was in every single thing, and you had to so, you yeah. had to add that song, and that was part of the thing. Yeah. Um, you sound pretty old, but kind of like this Fofty thing. Now listen, that's the most amazing thing of all time. Did. Did Fofty get his money or what? No, and and he's been on Twitter this or uh, Instagram oh. this morning, going hard. My did, new did you start following him? Favorite thing, not yet. My new favorite thing is I had to actually unfollow a couple people first. Why? Just because I that was my morning. What? What happened? I just unfollowed some people. No bigs. What What was the reasoning behind it? I can't see it anymore okay i muted i'm sorry i didn't unfollow i muted i couldn't see it it was how do you tr- mute how do you mute somebody on instagram i'll show you okay so it's not that you unfollowed them it's that you're not gonna see their shit i've blocked people and i felt bad about it level marketing or whatever it may be oh gotcha gotcha okay you know what i mean so if it's just too much of something you can mute them for a second and just be like, I cannot. Because in the stories, you it'll show, show that. that you'll watch the stories and you don't want to watch them. You kind of want to make some kind of statement. But ah, anyway. okay. Anyway, um, so I didn't. But this Fofty thing, and now we're it's talking the about thing of 50 all time. Cent. Yeah. Um, and I want to tell the audience here, because I, I, I've got it open. 23 million followers 50 Cent has. I was really, really surprised that he has 50 million or, or 23 million followers. Why? That's a big boy number that's usually reserved for like. He's pretty oh, active man. in a lot of different circles, though. He is, but I, I guess the strange part of me is this with 50 Cent. When he came out, he was massive, right? Mm-hmm. Just because we were in, in LA, there was, he was for five years, man. He was on the radio nonstop oh, yeah. forever. And then it just stopped. And. That was the time before social media. So you, you didn't have accounts. You didn't have Facebook and you didn't have Instagram. Like that shit didn't even exist yet. 
right? right? Um, so to me, I always thought of him as the 50 Cent the rapper. Well, he hasn't put out any new music in a long goddamn time. Mm-hmm. Here and there, he has, but no, no like bangers, no hits, mm-hmm. right? Um, by the time he kind of started to get acting roles and all that other stuff, social media was just kind of starting and all that stuff. But like a lot of the movies he did, which he financed himself, by the mm-hmm. way. Um, and, and it's fine. Like I completely understand how he has 23 million. You're the one who can't. I can't. And, yeah. and here's why. Most He's of these movies. Active and, yeah. it, I'm active on social media. I have like fucking 50,000 followers. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I was super fucking late to the game. But like with 50 Cent, all of those movies he made, nobody saw them. They didn't come out. Most of them went straight to DVD. And that was the, the catch of, did he spend all of his money? Because he went bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Did he bankrupt himself to get out of that uh, child custody thing? Child support payments? Maybe. Maybe, which we don't like, but hey. Uh, but I think he did. Probably. Um, or did he lose all of that vitamin water money? Because remember he did the vitamin water deal and that was... He didn't lose any money. 300 million. Like I don't know. He just fucking... sold that fucking mansion too. Like that was been on sale for... 23 years or whatever it was we talked about that on another right, show Right, that's true so i thought about all of that and all of those movies and then uh he came back with the show called power which people love but i looked at the ratings like the ratings are around like a million and a half two million which is yeah. great for stars because it's on stars mm-hmm. but that's not enough to have like 23 million followers i mean there's name your favorite actor my favorite actor yeah. sam rockwell Nowhere near 23 million followers. No. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if Julia Roberts has 23 million followers, for Christ's sakes. No, I don't think she does. So how is 50 Cent have 23 million followers? I don't know. I don't either. But it all started somewhere, and it all started with him shit-talking people. The latest, so I, I've been following him simply because I heard through somebody else that he just buries people on social media and will go after them all day and Relentless. night long. All like, but posts like six things a day where, you know, any publicist or whatever will tell you don't post more than two things a day on, on Instagram. Amazing. Or, amazing. Twitter's the only outlet where they, so they the, say you can post all the time. So he gets in a fight with so Randall Emmett. One, yeah. Yeah. Randall Emmett is a big producer. Fuck man. I, he did one of my movies, man, back in the day. Um, my, actually my first movie, he did seven ten split. Like he finds money independently, typically from overseas gets huge names in it and then sells these movies mm-hmm. around the world. That's mm-hmm. what he's, he's known for. In the meantime though, he's done like the expendables and uh, some other big shit. Um, but a lot of these 50 cent movies, 50 cent claims that he owes him a million dollars, $1 million and has been going after him religiously. He's probably gone after him. He's probably called him, text him, whatever that was. Well, he working. did text him. Yeah, that wasn't working. So he just put everything the beauty is that this guy is dating this girl named Lala from Vanderpump Rules on Bravo. Mm-hmm. So he has endless content to put up of this dumb fucking bitch <laughs> on his Instagram. Yeah. So first he puts up a clip of her talking about all the things that she does with this Emmett guy. Yeah. It's on Vanderpump Rules. It's not a private conversation. Nope. It wasn't recorded without her knowledge. Yeah. So he puts that up there. Then she gets on either her social media or something and turns, tries to turn the fact that he put that clip on Instagram into a Me Too. Yeah. She guys. Which it wasn't a me too guys, moment. Wasn't a me too in moment. In this clip on Vanderpump Rules, all she's talking about is sucking dick sucking for a his Ran dick. Rover. Yep. Doing what a, she a, needs a, a to do. A Land Rover. Did I call it a Ran Rover? Range Rover. Range Rover? Yeah. Ah, whatever. So Very Asian she goes, of me. I let him hit it the first night. I got a car the next day. Yeah. Uh, suck his dick. I get a Range Rover. Like she's saying all these things. On a TV show. On a TV show. The cameras are right here. Yeah. It's not a private, nope. you know. So then she tries to be like, he put something on what? Social media. Of yeah. M- of me talking about what I do with my man yeah. behind closed doors. And you're just like, it's perfect. It's perfect. Had it's he not been with this girl, I don't know how much. I mean, it would make him look stupid, right? Those texts that he's posting. 
uh, yeah. that 50's posting of him. And Fofty comes from this guy is sending 50 a text, texts that are just like, hey, man, leave me alone. I'm sorry. Please, I'm sorry. So My heart can't take it. My I'm heart going can't to take the it. ER. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually going. I'm called 911. I'm actually, I think I'm having a heart attack. Please, this is enough. Please, I can't take it, Fofty. So it he was, misspells 50 He misspells cent. 50, I think, twice. Yeah, Fofty. Fofty. And 50 Cent is amazing and goes with this and runs with it. So he runs with it. And I know what you're saying at home is like, dude, what the fuck does it matter with, with Instagram and whatever, right? And you, you, you're probably not following this. 23 million people are. To put it in perspective, when you have an audience of 23 million on Instagram, it's more than watch Tiger Woods win the fucking master, Masters. So yeah. by going hard on this, like it's become a thing in public now where like Chrissy Teigen... And you know, there's shirts already from the betches. Like, it's, oh, and it's the, the a, shirts, a by the way, real thing. The, and because this just started on Friday, the shirts have now grossed. I'm going to read this off my phone. Over three hundred thousand um, dollars. That, that just say, "I'm sorry, Fofty." I'm sorry, Fofty. And or it just give says me one million, million dollars. by Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, which is great. <laughs> so I don't know if he gets the money. I don't know. He what said he happens. got a quarter of a million of it last week, so he needs seven fifty to complete it. But like, if you can use social media to get money out of in people in this way, and really, it just exposes these little fucking dirty idiots. The weird thing about him is he's able to stay relevant and in, in the public because, again, power is not that big of a show. No, and Ratings I think wise. maybe this must be it. Like you're saying, the 23 million. Like well, got, I'm gonna he, follow him for feuds. Fuck yeah. Yeah, because like, he, he got into a Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Um, over that broken deal, and but he just kept going after him for still to this day for like years and years and years. I love it. Um, the cop thing that happened to him with uh, the was it the sergeant or whatever in New York uh-huh. who said that they should kill 50 Cent if they saw him out. Like he ran with that for a long time. He's suing them. He's able to develop these storylines on social media that nobody else is. And you're like, man, with Smart. 23 million people, it's just it's just massive ratings, essentially. Oh, yeah. People are just sitting back and watching the show. Yeah, because he's basically. posting six or seven times a day. So you're getting updates on this story mm-hmm. where you feel like real you're time. a part of it, where you're like, oh, my God. Text, like <laughs> real text between them. Like, that's great. Great. That's it's great. It's great and theater. Again, like I said, the La La character is the one that I know the most yeah. from this whole situation. And having her to make him look even more retarded is awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. And look, I, I know those guys over there with Randall Emmett and those guys. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the old school, like, hey, man, we're powerful producers and we're going to date young women and it's, we can give away cars and shit like that. Sure. So I'm not even going to say this isn't true because it is. Yeah. Uh, but this feud's amazing, and I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. Yeah. Maybe you and I should have one, Jabes. Oh, we are. Yeah. Didn't you know? No, no. I'll tell you about it. All right. Tell, you, tell me about it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't see any of my friends anymore on, on Instagram. The al- algorithms have completely changed, and I, I see like all, only like memes and shit like that. Maybe they muted you. Maybe. What if they did? If you mute someone, can I? Can you not see their stuff? You can. Oh, you can. You can see their stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's 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 what I'm bitching about. Yeah, but if they mute see you, you might get like bumped down on some kind of algorithm of Oof, theirs. Who knows? Again, simulated world. We're all living in an algorithm right now, aren't we? <laughs> we. It's crazy to me to be communicating with people by following and muting and not liking. Like this is a new place for me to be in sure where where that's how people are either getting back at someone or telling you making a statement right by not liking something or by muting you or not watching your story something like that is a whole new world for me that makes me want to kill yeah i don't even think about it i really don't um, I just like funny shit and that's about it. So fuck it. Uh, this one goes out to Fofty. Fofty the snowman. Oh, 
Gold Fofty. Fofty. Brilliant, buddy. Brilliant. <laughs> and I'm here for it. And I am i can't wait to see what happens. Oh, James. I wish I would have known you. You know, 14 years old, smoking cigs, pounding 40s, you know. Not much has changed, but yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.